what is going on guys welcome back to another video in this video we are going to be building a bubble io app that's going to be creating calendar entries okay and so the architecture of the whole system is going to look something like this we have a user we have a bubble front end which is the ui it's going to be interfacing through the bubble ui and then we're going to be using something called quickwork.co which i'm going to show you in a second it's a very, very powerful system. Bubble is going to talk through API. And this tool is going to allow us to quickly and easily interface with Google Calendar and allow us to create a different calendar entries. So we can create a new entry, we can delete, we can modify, we can do a lot of interesting things. And this will essentially allow us to build a calendar client in Bubble, which is very, very powerful tool. And obviously, you can take it further. You can do a lot of amazing things. The possibilities are pretty much endless, which you will see as I'm going to go through the video. And so let me show you the main tool we're going to be using. This is an amazing tool. It's called quickwork.co, and it's a unified platform for those who want to do more with APIs, integrated with thousands of apps, okay? And so this, this is, these are just sample of apps that we can interface with okay so you can build apis in minutes engage with users wherever they are etc etc and this is kind of like zapier kind of like some of the other tools but this is a really really easy uh way to get started and to interface with a lot of third-party apps without worrying too much about apis and kind of worrying about this mess okay and so the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna build the simple uh tool inside quickworks we are gonna connect it with my google calendar and we're gonna issue a couple of requests just to show you how it works and how to configure it properly and then in the second part of the video i'm gonna show you how to actually do this from bubble okay so in other words Right now, we're going to work on this, the second uh, half, if you will, uh, right here. And then we are going to be working on this first half, okay? And so here's QuickWorks. I'm already logged into account, and this is what it looks like when, once I'm logged in. Very, very simple. And what uh, Zapier calls automations, Quick work actually calls journeys. Okay, so I have a journey here. It's inactive. We're going to create a brand new journey. And I'm going to show you exactly how this works. So we're going to click on new journey. And we're going to create a new trigger here. Okay, and the trigger is going to be HTTP. Okay, now HTTP is a very, very powerful trigger because HTTP allows us to send a request pretty much from anywhere. Bubble can do it. We can use, you know, uh, HTTP web client to send requests. It doesn't really matter, but it enables us a very powerful connection. So I typically like to start with my um, new triggers using HTTP, okay? And as you can see, it says here, new request on HTTP link. We're gonna click on this, and this is new request on HTTP link. It's real time. We're gonna call this uh, G calendar, okay? HTTP method, okay? We're gonna be doing a post request, okay? Get is typically used for read-only requests, okay? Post is typically to write stuff, to create things. And so in this example, in this first example, we're actually going to be creating a brand new calendar entry, okay? And so HTTP method is post. Now we have the request payload. We have the request header example, params example. And then we have the steps, okay? And so the way this works is that Right now, we are configuring the trigger, meaning this, uh, you can think of triggers and actions as if-then condition. So if this happens, do this steps. And the simple action is going to, we're going to go in here. And as you can see, there's a lot of things that you can do, tons and tons of different things that you can do. And you don't have to learn uh, new APIs for each of these uh, actions here, for each of these steps. And we're going to search for calendar. Okay, we're going to type calendar. And as you can see, you have Google Calendar. And what we're going to do is we're going to go in here and we're going to click on create event. Okay, action create event. And obviously, we're going to be passing the information in the request. Okay, so we need to configure this, right? Action is create event existing calendar. So I already connected my Google account. You just have to click on link account and you can connect any of your Google accounts. 
if you have multiple and it will allow it will know how to actually go ahead and create the account once you give it to permission to your Google account. So I already, I already did that. So I, I don't need to do that. And now we have this uh, here set up. Now, what's important here is this, we need to configure this trigger here. Very, very important, right? This is the output here, which I'm, which I'm gonna explain in a second. But what we need to do here is we need to con configure a payload, okay? Provide an example of body this will be used to create the schema for data received from the webhook required only for content type JSON. So it's very important that we provide a sample payload because this is how we're gonna be sending the data, or at least this is how the client is gonna be sending the data. And so here's an example of simple payload, okay? So this is in JSON. I'm not gonna be talking too much about JSON, but if you need to do any kind of integration, any kind of REST APIs, you, you need to know what JSON is. It's very, very simple, extremely simple. Um, in short, when you see curly braces, it, it really denotes an object. So we have an object here, and then you can have arrays. So if you have um, these angle uh, brackets, these square brackets, um, those are arrays. So anything enclosed inside square brackets are arrays, but anything enclosed inside these curly braces is an object, okay? So in this example, we have an event name, we have event start, and we have event end, okay? These are just examples here. So if we do that, we this is what we are sending, okay? This has nothing to do with uh, quickwork.io. This is my defined way. This is how I define things. Now, when I enter this and I, you know, click out, I click away, I see this configured right away. We see a payload, we see event name, event start. Now we can actually utilize these values, which is important, right? Because if we go into Google Calendar, we need to actually create an event, right? We have to create an event here and we need to tell it how to actually create this event, okay? Very important, right? Now, the next thing that you need to do is you need to actually configure how these values that we are passing in our REST API request are actually gonna go ahead and actually create this event. So if you go into the steps, you see we have an action, we have an app, Google Calendar, we have an action, create event, and then we have these various options, and these options are specific to the specific app that we chose. So if we choose, uh, you know, something like Amazon S3, the options are gonna be different. If we choose, uh, if we choose something else here, so if we go down and we choose something else from this drop down, the options are going to be different. For but for this specific option, this Google Calendar, we have these options. Okay, and so first of all, we have the calendar, and I only have one calendar. We're going to select it from list. We're going to choose primary, and the next thing we need to configure is the start date time and date time and event name. And then we have time zone all of these things, event description, but I believe all of these other options are optional. And so we need to configure the start date time. What we're gonna do is we're gonna go enter start date time and we are gonna choose this right here, okay? We're gonna click on this here and it's going to configure it using the parameter that we sent. So we basically sent event start and this is gonna go in here. We're gonna do the same thing here. We're gonna click on event end and then the event name, same thing, and we're gonna choose event name, and that is all we need to do. Uh, time zone, you know, you can pick a time zone where you want this to be created. Let's say we do uh, Eastern uh, Eastern Standard Time, so like New York City. Uh, you can also specify event description, event location, uh, all of these other options, but we're not gonna be doing this. This is very, very simple, because all you need to do is uh, go back to your request and add more parameters there, okay? So once we configured everything, we can click on start journey and see what happens. As you can see, once we configured this trigger HTTP, we were given this URL. And this is a URL that we need to be sending requests to. And in order to test, first you need to test, even before you start building your bubble app, you need to test if this is actually working. And one of the best tools for testings is a tool called postman.co. It's a very, very popular tool for building, for you know, testing, creating, modifying uh, HTTP uh, JSON or any kind of request, REST API. I would just say for testing all kinds of REST API requests. 
So we have here a post request, okay? And we just, we basically clicked on new, we created a new request by clicking on this new here, on this plus sign here. And we entered the post as the URL. We can also enter parameters here. We don't need any of these parameters. We're gonna remove, there's no parameters. Headers are all standard, there's no headers. What we do need is the body. So when you go into body, you're gonna go into raw and you're gonna enter exactly how you see here. This is the request that we're gonna be sending. And remember, we designed this request. This is a request that we created ourselves. It, nobody, no app told us that we need to send it in this format. I just decided, okay, I'm gonna send a JSON object with these fields, okay, and that's, that's all. So if I go back here, I have dates. I have event one, uh, it's gonna start April 12th, uh, at this time, it's gonna end April 15, and this time, okay? And this is the request we have. Now we're gonna click send, and we're gonna see if this is working. If it's successful, we should see the same request uh, created in our, in my, actually, in my Google Calendar. So I'm gonna hit send, and we're gonna see it. Sending request, we got a response, okay. Okay, 200, okay, this is already good. Now, we're gonna go back to Quick Work Automations and we are gonna go to the top of the screen and we're gonna go to History. And as you can see, we have a green uh, checkbox here which and it tells us success. So this should have worked because this did not error out. We can actually click on it and we can open it up and we can see what exactly happened. Okay, see these are the steps. This is what we sent. This is the data we got back. So we're gonna go back and we're gonna go in my Google Calendar, I'm on March. We're gonna go into April and guess what? We have a brand new request, remember, from 13 to 15. And so here's the request created. On these dates, event one, this is exactly what we created. This is exactly right. Now I'm using a different time zone here. I'm not on the Eastern time zone and so that is why it's showing it slightly different dates because I think what we actually asked it to send, so if we go back to this here, uh, we said 4.12, 4.15, but I'm ahead of the Eastern time zone, and, the, and that is why I'm seeing 16, but nevertheless, this is exactly right. If I would have configured it to send uh, the request at the exact same time zone, then you would have seen the exact same dates. But as you can see, it's working perfectly, event one. Let's try it again, let's go back to this automation, let's try event two, and let's try um, April 1st through April 5th, or maybe April 7th, a whole week. We're gonna hit send, this is event two. We see okay, we see 200 okay green, we're gonna go back, and guess what? We see a brand new event, event two. And this is amazing, because I don't need to go out, I don't need to learn this uh, Google Calendar API, I can just automate very, very easily using this tool. And so if we go back here, we have our journey, we have our history, as you can see, we now have two requests, uh, which is absolutely correct. This is exactly how we send, and we can stop our journey to pause this journey so that, you know, this, these new requests we're gonna be sending are not gonna be, are not gonna activate, they're not gonna do anything. But we're gonna leave this as is, we tested that it's working. So the next thing we need to do is we need to quickly build a bubble app for this UI because we're not gonna be sending and making uh, all of these uh, calendar events using this uh, kind of this programmer, this, this technical UI. We're gonna be using bubble, okay? So we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna create a brand new app in bubble to do just that, okay? So we're gonna go back to bubble. Uh, we are gonna, I'm just gonna copy an existing app. We're gonna call this G Calendar. Uh, we're gonna click on copy and we are gonna create a brand new app. Actually, it's taken. Let's try 2021, see if that's working. It looks like somebody else is working on maybe on a similar app idea. And we're gonna hit copy. And it's loading our new app. And this is gonna be very, very easy to do. And so here we are in my app. I have some old stuff here. I'm gonna go ahead and delete it. We have the header. I probably have a couple of other pages there. I'm gonna, I don't even need to touch it because we're not gonna be using those pages. So I'm gonna go ahead and quickly create a new UI. I like to start any new UI inside a group, which makes it easy to kind of work with it. So I'm gonna have a group here. Uh, we're gonna have a text field. And this text field is gonna say, uh, event name, 
okay event name we have this here we're gonna have an input here we're gonna drag and drop an input i'm gonna copy and paste it we need two more fields okay and this is gonna say uh event start and this is gonna say event end okay and then we have this input here we have this here just gonna fix it up a little bit that's nice and tidy and we have um this is gonna be the event name and now we also need a date and time picker okay we're gonna drag and drop this here we're gonna drag and drop this here we're gonna go in here and take a look uh input type is date and time let's do date and time uh time interval style date and time picker maximum hour we have a couple of settings here uh we don't really need to uh mess with these settings too much we can just go back here and we're gonna make it date and time okay we're gonna have this next we're gonna have a quick button we're gonna go in here we're gonna drag and drop a button and this button is gonna say submit it says edit me we're gonna say submit or create event create event and obviously you can add more things here as you can see this is really nice because i can just dra drag and drop this group and everything is automatically everything rearranges which is good practice in bubble from my experience so this is what we have uh the next thing we need to do is we need to go into plugins we need to go to this api connector and we can delete this is an old one i'm just going to remove it just to uh have things a little bit more organized we're going to add a new api this is going to be our uh google calendar api and we are going to be making a call here right? so this is a call to create an event so we're going to expand this we're going to click on create event we're going to call this create event this is going to be a post and this is going to be an action okay it's not going to be data because we're not going to getting data back uh it's an action very important that you use it as an action so the post is going to have this url that uh journey this uh quick work uh journey gave us so if we go back to journey and we go in here this is what we need to copy here we are going to go back here paste it here and then we need to specify some parameters right and we're going to do that inside the body right body type is json next we're going to paste our payload so i'm going to select all of this i'm going to go back into bubble and i'm going to paste it and we're going to be using dynamic values otherwise we're just going to enter all of this data which is not what we want so we're going to be using dynamic values we're going to enter this and the event name is going to be event name here and now the key is set up correctly this is going to be event start event start and then we're going to go back here this is event end now we have the values okay uh these are not going to be private because we're going to be setting them this is actually event end right here and we don't need to really capture uh response headers let's test out with a, with a value just to test out this call to see if it's working correctly so event name is event three uh let's go back to our values and this is the event start we're gonna copy all of this i'm gonna copy this and i'm gonna paste it here and i'm just gonna put may i'm gonna choose may first this is gonna be may third or fifth something like that and now we have it all set up we have the values here event three we have the call and now we can try initialize call to see if it's working and so once we executed our call we are getting some values all we're getting is headers and we don't really care about this right we can just hit cancel in fact we don't even need capture response headers you can just uh remove this because we don't really care about response headers this is this is all we care about we just we just care about executing this request and that's it if we don't see any errors then we are absolutely fine so as you can see this is working we have this create event and now we can go into bobble we're going to go back into our design and we can create a workflow right start edit workflow click here to add an action it's going to be plugins you're going to go into plugins and you're going to go into g calendar api create event and now you have all the values so you can actually go out and and submit these values you're going to and so as you can see we have some uh, we have some default values here but we don't want these default values we want actually the values that we submit so if we go back here i'm going to rename this input i'm going to i'm going to call this input start this is going to be input input end and this is going to be input name 
okay input start name uh name start and end and that's it and so the time format we have the time format which is gonna be uh 24 hour time yeah looks good to me okay now we can go back to our workflow we can go back here and we can actually configure it we're gonna insert dynamic data this is gonna be name value uh this is going to be end value actually start mix that up over there this is going to be start so we're going to go here input start value and this is going to be input end value and that is all that is all we have to do next uh when you hit now there's a couple of things that you may want to do when when they actually create the event is going to issue this api call maybe you want to get something back maybe you want uh, to display a message, an alert. It's really up to you. But let's test this out. Let's see if it's working. So we're going to go into preview here. We're going to execute our app. We're going to preview it. And we fill in all of these fields. So for instance, event name is going to be event bubble. Event start is going to be uh, April 1st. Event end is April 7th. It should go out and create this event for us. Okay, so we're going to hit on create event. Let's actually refresh the page before we do that. Okay, and so if you put event from bubble, and then we put four one, and this is gonna be four seven, we hit create event. It should go out and create this event in our Google Calendar. So I'm gonna go into my Google Calendar and I'm gonna show you that we have an event created here and it says event from bubble. And so this is a very nice way to create uh, events in Google Calendar. You can also modify uh, various events. You can delete. You can do all kinds of interesting things. And actually, if you take a look in our automations, our journey here, if you go in here, uh, create event, and you stop this journey, you can see that you can do a lot of interesting things. You can get an event. You can delete attendees from an event. You can update event details, add attendees, delete event, quick add event, get events, right? This is plural. So there's so many, so many things that you can do. And using this automation tool called Quick Work makes it very, very easy for you to do just that. And remember, there's all kinds of other automations that you can do. You're not limited to Google Calendar. It's just in this video, I wanted to show you an example where we are working with something that you may be already familiar with. And so if you wanna see more videos with this automations, there's a lot of automations that you can do. Uh, if you delete this automation and you, for instance, you let's say we delete this automation and we hit on simple action, you're gonna see so many things that you can do. Lots of lots of um, lots of integrations, and so if you want to see another video uh, with more of these integrations, with more of these ideas, leave a comment below. Like this video, let me know if you want me to make more of these kinds of videos. Oh, also, let me know if you have any questions or comments. I would be happy to address them in some of the future videos. But for now, this is all I wanted to cover in this video. So I really hope you enjoyed it. Uh, like this video leave a comment below let me know what you thought about it and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already this channel is all about no code using bubble app giver and many other no code platforms that are available today so once again thank you so much for watching this video and i will talk to you real soon